Pavement have released five studio albums, the first in 1992 and the last in 1999. They were an indie rock uh, or alt-rock band from California, and they resolutely stuck to independent labels through the whole of their career. Um, although they fell apart acrimoniously, they have got back together twice uh, since their dissolution for reunions. Hi, my name's Dan. So this was the last of their five, five albums, and it's my first encounter with them as a band. They're somewhat under the radar, I think, for a lot of people. Um, possibly more exposure in America, and I'm a Brit, so uh, there are things that I don't get so exposed to as a result of that, um, and vice versa. Um, so apparently this album is more disciplined and, in quotes, stood up straighter, or it was intended to be a band that, uh, an album that, that stood up straighter than previous albums. So I'm guessing that they were quite uh, well, lo-fi. I've seen the, the term lo-fi used for them, uh, and, and maybe loose in that sense. Um, and uh, apparently, the, so they had a producer in who, who obviously produced the album, helped them make it, and they were... Uh, there are various comments available on the Wikipedia page about the album from members of the band about how many takes they had to do and how they're not used to that. And so they, it was more um, there was more work and more discipline going into. But the the point of that was to make it more accessible and more widely uh, listened to. Um, apparently, the drummer didn't of the band didn't drum on all the tracks because there were times that he couldn't keep in time well enough. For the, uh, presumably for the uh, for the producer, which is an interesting thing to to hear. Um, uh, musically, um, they're definitely kind of uh, alt rock. There, um, it's guitar based, with uh, you know, obviously the rest of the band backing as well. But there's some interesting stuff going on at times. So there's you know interesting stops and bits of rhythmic things and twiddles. Um, uh, there's non-standard structures for quite a few of the songs. They don't kind of go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you know, resolutely, or you know, kind of standard pop song structure. There's some interesting noises going on. There's some electronic noises at various points. Uh, there's one track that's got quite a bit of banjo in it. There's some bits where they've got discordant stuff going on. So it's um, there's quite a lot going on here musically. Sometimes they're surprisingly upbeat, and particularly when you you know you hear the subject matter and the the words, it kind of sometimes there's a little bit of a jar there between the the upbeat nature of the music and the the lyrics. So the the uh, the guy singing is Stephen Malchus. Uh, so he's the front guy for the band. Uh, was um, and he sang and he played guitar and he was the lead figure and he wrote the songs as well um, and his singing at various points in it reminded me of Lou Reed um, who was obviously quite a bit earlier in time but it's it's that similar kind of fairly low and quite laconic and laid back delivery um it's there's definitely a you know an american accent to his delivery because there's part you know kind of half talking at times, at times as well um and it, it's quite an effective delivery uh i think it, it works well um uh, the songs mostly somewhat cryptic i would say um more painting pictures rather than telling stories a lot of songs like that just as i was so what i do uh, when i'm doing these reviews is that i write a set of notes and i'm basically uh, reminding myself of what I want to say from my set of notes. And whilst I was making my set of notes, I was listening to the album, which I often do, kind of get it on and do something. And at, that, at this point, when I started talking about the lyrics, I heard a, a set of lyrics on the song that was playing, so I want to read those out for you just because it struck me as being fairly kind of um, indicative of how the lyrics go on this album. Watch out for the gypsy children in electric dresses. They're insane. I hear they live in crematoriums and smoke your remains. Uh, yeah, odd. Um, and yeah, there's other stuff that's odd in here as well. Uh, there's some unusual references to Christian, and there's one reference to Satanist. Uh, the line lengths are sometimes unusual. Sometimes the kind of conceptual sentences run over line ends. Um, there's a, a little bit of a kind of Thing that bands were, some bands were doing, or some artists were doing around this time, which was 
kind of messing about with the normal structure of lines and stuff to 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 be exp- you know unusual uh, and they do that and it works they're rhyming they don't feel like they have to rhyme every time they've got stuff they don't feel like things have to scan the same in every line um it is dark at times definitely a little disturbing i think the last track on the album uh, which is called dot 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 and carrot rope carrot rope has some stuff in it that i just want to, oh, really yeah okay um it feels quite late 80s which is when it is which is fine you know it's not it's not a problem but it kind of definitely fits in the, the zeitgeist of the time i quite enjoyed it i felt that uh it's interesting enough and it's odd enough to be engaging so i i didn't find it boring it's not necessarily my kind of core kind of thing but uh, in terms of being uh alt rock it was, yeah I, I think yeah this is all right so kind of mild uh enthusiasm i think is how i would uh, egg myself here so um as always, at this point, I'd like to invite you to tell me what you think of this album uh, by leaving a comment. Uh, please do that, and that's it from me for now. I want a set. Hey. It's my second-hand wonder, a thing that recovers the doubt. Slim. Like the rain. Don't storm. Gotta do what you want. Assemble and at sail the car. Slim. Door. It's all right Down. to shake, to fight, to feel.